Hi, my name is Matea Jones. Thanks for joining us for our York Home Live Tour of Campus Health Services. Today we're going to be touring Pat Walker Health Center. It's newly renovated, so we get to show you guys all the new goodies that they have in store for you. Um, my name is Matea. I'm a senior here at the University of Arkansas. My major is food science, so we're going into that home stretch almost there. And then today with us is going to be Courtney. She's going to be reporting for us and answering all your questions, but I'll let her introduce herself. Good morning, my name is Courtney Salsby. Um, I'm also a student here at the University of Arkansas. I'm about to start my sophomore year as a nursing major. I'm super excited. I'm actually from Fayetteville, so feel free to ask any questions while we tour today. Um, I'll be sure to answer those for you guys. Um, so yeah, let us know any questions and concerns that you have and be sure to acknowledge them. Okay, so we're gonna come inside the new um, grand entrance. So this is going to be the new atrium, the new grand entrance for the health center. And then we're going to meet Zach, who's going to talk more about Pat Walker. Hi, everybody. So, hi, everybody. I'm Zach Brown. I'm the director of communications for the Pat Walker Health Center. And welcome to our brand new state-of-the-art health center facility. Fancy, fancy. It is. We are very excited. For the last about year and a half, we have been working to double the size of a health center. Um, so as you can see here uh, behind us, we have all new waiting area, grand entryway. And really, the best, the best thing about it is that we increase the efficiencies of our health center. So we were able to move all of our medical clinics onto one floor. We doubled the size the space of our counseling and we added three awesome new wellness classrooms for our wellness and health educators so uh, how about let's uh, take a little tour of the facility before we do that yeah, I just sure. wanted to highlight where we are on campus for those who weren't sure so we're in the Pat Walker Health Center so that's going to be on the corner of Garland and Maple right across the street from Holcomb Hall Future Hall and then next door to the Northwest Quads specifically Harding no Gatewood Gatewood Hall so you're right close by to a bunch of dorms. Um, the bookstore is close by. Fulbright Dining Hall and the Quads really close by. And then across the street from like Treasury Office, uh, the Law School, and then the Union is real close by. So just, and the new stadium too. Yes, mm -hmm. the new stadium is close by. So just in case you guys didn't know where we were. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, again, so what you guys just saw here was the grand entrance of the health center. Uh, we have a great new staircase that leads right into the direct center. Um, and that leads right to this main section where you can then go left or right. And so we're gonna start by going left and show you guys where the primary care clinic is. So, uh, what is primary care? The primary care is essentially gonna be your traditional patient, you know, family practice, uh, your home away from home doctor. Most of our students, uh, roughly about 50% of the student body engages with the health center, uh, most of which really do use the primary care. So your board certified, you know, family pr uh, physician practitioners. Now, we haven't quite finished this area yet, but starting next Tuesday, we're gonna move all of our primary care folks back over here and have our new primary care lobby. In addition to the primary care, uh, this also houses our allergy immunization uh, and travel clinic. Now, the allergy immunization and travel clinic is where you guys would come in and get a flu shot or any type of vaccinations if you have allergies, um, allergy injections, then you know, we can obviously help you there. Flu shots. Flu right. shots, yes. So the big thing on campus that we focus on the first week you guys are here is to get your flu shot. Uh, you know, being living in the residence halls, you're gonna obviously have a lot of students around. It's gonna be, you know, a lot of germs. And so we really, really try to emphasize the importance of getting your flu vaccine, practicing good respiratory hygiene. So like washing your hands, washing your phone, uh, making sure that your doorknobs are clean, covering your mouth when you cough, it's just so many different things. And then of course, if you do have flu-like symptoms, we wanna make sure that you guys are gonna be well taken care of. So, you know, the primary care clinic is a great place to come in and get, you know, get your medications, get checked, make sure you don't, you know, get their testing. Um, so let me show you guys specifically where you would check in. How do you schedule an appointment with the health center? So scheduling an appointment is really simple. We have three ways to schedule a medical appointment. So the first and the most important way is obviously you can walk in here. Uh, we offer some limited same day appointments, but you know there are two other ways to. You can call the health center phone line and schedule an appointment and speak with one of our medical intakes uh, person, or you can go online to the health center website, log into the patient portal, and you can actually look at the calendar two weeks out and decide when is the best time. So you can schedule online, which is really convenient. What's your website? So the website, uh, the university's website for the health center is health 
www.uark.edu. And so through that page, you will then be able to go and book appointments on the patient portal, as well as access all of our different phone numbers and our general hours. Now, to let you guys know, the general hours of the health center is gonna be eight to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, but we do have extended hours for uh, the primary care clinic on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, so they're open till 7 p.m. And then we are open on Saturdays uh, till 3 p.m. with the exception of home football games. So, um, and that's just really more of just a parking issue, so. <laughs> So yeah, so again, here you have your medical intake. This is where you'll check in for your appointment. This is where you'll drop off your insurance card. And insurance is another important thing. So you, uh, the students do, you guys pay a student health fee, but in addition to the student health fee, uh, our medical clinics do take insurance. So if you would like to bill insurance, um, you just wanna make sure that we are an in-network provider for you guys. And then what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna just double check what your copay is, what your deductible is, and then make sure that you know you can, you know, that you come in, bring your card, and then check in. We'll put your insurance on file, and then we'll bill your insurance. And then whatever your copay is uh, at home, we'll do your copay here, uh, and that can either paid here or it can also be billed to your UA Connect account. So, which is a nice convenience. It really is, you know. I mean, because again, I mean, we don't really want to have you know discourage students from coming in, and you know, understanding that healthcare is you know can sometimes be you know costly. You know, our whole approach is really to make things more cost affordable, and then of course you know obviously making it the ease. So again charging to your student account makes things a lot easier so uh, let's see here so um, outside of that if you uh, if you don't have student insurance or student, don't have health insurance or you are interested in getting your uh, student health plan we do have a student health insurance plan um, we have an awesome health insurance representative uh, named Pam Delaney whose office is going to be on the first floor starting next week right as you walk in and so she can easily you know you can drop by and see her if you wanted to look at and figure out what uh, student health insurance would be a better plan than necessarily being on your parents. So, uh, let's see. What's um, right, we're heading on. I'm about to say let's let's head, head over to, to the, the women's clinic. Yeah. yeah. So the health center is really the easiest way to describe the health center is that we're positioned in three major departments. You have our medical services, our counseling and psych psychological services, or CAPS as the campus knows, and wellness and health promotion. Now, within the medical services, I've already talked about primary care and the allergy immunization clinic. Uh, the third component of our medical services is our women's clinic. We have a full-service women's clinic with a full-time gynecologist who is one of the best gynecologists in the city. Um, she actually closed her private practice and wanted, you know, actively said, I want to come and help students. And that's one of the nice things about all of our professional staff. All of our medical staff and counseling staff are board-certified, licensed physicians uh, and professionals. And not only are they board certified and licensed, they actually have this desire to want to work with students. They're more in tune to the needs of students from a health standpoint. And so we're obviously doing everything we can to make sure that we're keeping students healthy and in class. So we're back here in the main entryway and right here down this way is the women's clinic. We have the waiting area for the women's clinic and then on the right is gonna be your check-in for the women's clinic. Um, the women's clinic is, again, like I said, full service. We offer, you know, obviously wellness exams, um, in addition to long-term and short-term contraception, uh, STD testing, a whole, ho a whole host of services um, for the female patients. So um, we're really excited about having Dr. Paulson on staff, who is our gynecologist again. She's new, is that right? She started last summer, and last it was summer. one of the things where, we, for a while, we were, um, we didn't have a full-time gynecologist, you know, and that was really difficult for a lot of our female patients. And so we really made it a priority to say, go out there and get someone who was phenomenal and who really understood, you know, the health benefits of, you know, constantly going to the doctor and getting sure your checkups. And so um, we're so happy to have Dr. Paulson here. Do you guys have an on-site lab? Yes, so we do have a diagnostic testing lab facility. Uh, it's back in the medical clinic. Um, and so uh, you can either, you know, if you have uh, you need, uh, doctor's orders, like a, your doctor back home needs to, you know, submit some type of, you know, lab work, we can easily draw blood, we can do any type of lab work, and uh, we can also either send things out for diagnostic testing as well. So, but it is one of the added convenience of having a lab facility is that we are able to do things like flu swaps, double check to see if you have the flu virus, or uh, for instance, we have a, uh, a STD clinic called the GYT clinic or the get yourself tested. And that is the, uh, the aspect of that is really to encourage students to come in and to check to see if they have, you know, one of those common uh, STDs that they may not necessarily know they have. Because again, I mean, one of the 
crazy things to think about is that you know half of all new STDs uh, that are contracted are contracted by young folks anywhere from 18 to 24. So we really want to make sure that students are looking at the different pro programs and services that we offer here in the medical clinics mm -hmm. to show you know, to see really exactly how they impact them in the long term. So again, with a lot of students not realizing that STDs actually you could actually have one and not realize that you have it. Uh, that can actually lead to long-term health effects. So we really want to make sure that you know students have access to these different things, and that's just a simple walk-in clinic. So, and we'll do a lot more education about that as you guys get on campus, though. Where can we follow you on social media? So yes, yeah, so the Health Center is on uh, Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we are on Twitter. And you can follow us at U of A Health. That's U of A Health. Um, and feel free to you know just peruse around, look at different things we do. Our whole, really our big component is we really want to try to make sure that we're being more active and engaging online. And so we've been increasing our online presence, you know, providing tips, uh, various, you know, uh, health, like, you know, health tips essentially, so. Great. So now we are up here on the second floor. This is the second floor atrium. It is our brand new second floor, part of the addition. Now we added about 20,000 square feet to the existing facility. And this now leads us into two different directions. We can either head towards CAPS or we can head towards wellness. And I think what we'll do first is we'll actually head towards CAPS. Uh, before we go to CAPS, can you kind of talk about HIPAA and the points for that as a portion of our wellness center? Oh, of course, yeah. So um, as many of you guys probably know, uh, patient privacy is obviously one of those protected informations. And so we really take pride in our ability to prevent you know any information getting out so we're constantly doing checks on not only like the IT side of things but then also we want to make sure that we take the you know, the, the <laughs> we want to make sure that we're taking those precautions as far as other information so for instance like class excuses I know a lot of folks have questions about what do they do if they're sick and they miss class well unfortunately the health center doesn't provide class excuses and that is specifically because patient privacy laws prevent us from providing any information to those who are not deemed your medical uh, you know, emergency contact or any type of other person like that's you know related to you we're not allowed to give that information including dates and times of services rendered so it's really makes it difficult so what we tell students all the time when it comes to if you have to miss class because you're sick let your professor know ahead of time and I promise you they don't want you there sick as much as you don't want to be there sick so you know, if there is a situation though where you guys do need a missed class excuse, you know, we're, we are obviously happy to help and, you know, speak to your professor in certain, you know, specific situations. But generally, if you reach out to your professor ahead of time, they're gonna understand, so. They're and hilarious. double they check understand. your class syllabuses too. Don't a lot of professors do. Yeah, a lot of class professors actually, uh, in their syllabuses, give you guys sick days. So just double check and make sure you read your syllabuses clearly and understand what the absence policy is, so. Mateo, according to you, all have experience in, you know, uh, being sick with class and anything that... Actually, I've professors. never missed class for being sick before. Really? I am very vigilant. You're a senior. I know, <laughs> right? I've never missed school for, like, having the flu or anything like that. So I'm very lucky. But I did have a friend who got sick last year, um, and she just had to contact her professors. They didn't want her there any more than she wanted to be there. And they were very understanding of, like, just get better and then come to class because mm -hmm. they didn't want her sickness either. Yeah, I had really bad luck and got the flu the week of finals week. Ooh, oh my no. And I never get sick. And it was bad. I had 104 fever for like two weeks straight. And all of my teachers were really understanding. But it was rough. I couldn't yeah. move. So they were like, don't come. Like, so Sanitize. Yeah. You know, hand sanitizer. Disinfect your rooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sick friends. You're like, I need you to go away until uh -huh. you're no longer sick. That's why I've made it three years. No the, sickness. And the three things I really tell you know, students about you know, how to kind of stay <laughs> safe with the germs on campus is to sanitize your phone, doorknobs, or anything that's frequently touched. Uh, make sure you're covering your mouth when you cough. Um, and then washing your hands frequently, and then yeah. don't share drinks, uh, isolate yourself from other um, friends who may be sick. Um, and then of course, you know, if you are sick, you know, there are resources in place, uh, both, you know, for the housing and the academic side of things that would allow you kind of to isolate yourself. So like, I don't know if you guys want to talk about the sick trays oh, yeah, at all. Oh yeah, there's sick trays. Um, so if you're sick, you can submit forms at your front desk mm -hmm. and get food brought to you so you don't have to go to the dining hall and bring your sickness with you. Um, and also, is there anything else about sick trays, I think? No, I just think that's okay. really us. Yeah, so I think we're going to move into CAPS now, but before we go in there, we want to introduce you guys to Megan, um, and choose who's her role Hi. here in CAPS. 
So my name is Megan Little. I am a mental health clinician, and so what that means is I provide counseling services for students. I'm in a pretty unique position, so my office is actually in a residence hall. And my office is in Maple Hill East, and we have a whole program where there's not just me, but there are actually six other um, student workers that provide counseling in the residence halls too. And um, we'll talk a little bit about how to get an appointment with us through going through CAPS in that process. So yeah, let's take a look through there. Yeah. Uh, before we head in there, let you guys know that we are still uh, right now currently finishing up the renovations on the CAPS facility. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we did decide to double this usable space of CAPS, so that allowed us to bring in additional uh, clinicians as well as make sure that we kind of gave a little bit more space for things like group workshops as well as just, you know, individual counseling. So as we walk through the, from the old, from the new building to the old building, uh, as you can see here, we have this new glass area, and this is actually the CAPS, new CAPS waiting area. And of course, you know, a lot of this will be changed uh, over the next week as we start to move in here. We actually start moving our CAPS folks over to the new facility starting this Friday. So by the time you guys get on campus, we'll be fully operational and there'll be some minor things that we'll be changing still. But as with any construction project, there's always tweaks that'll be made after the fact. And Megan, I'm, when it comes to CAPS services, what, when does a student typically seek those out? Like what are the triggers for that typically? Yeah, so, that's a, a big question, but it's a multitude of reasons. So we have some students that reach out for services when they're newly on campus and they're adjusting to campus life and creating a community. And then we have students who maybe have always struggled with anxiety and they just didn't have the resources in their hometown. And so now they're reaching out for those resources. Um, students reach out for if they're experiencing depression symptoms as well, as well as even like a breakup or changes in relationships or even family distress. Maybe a lot is going on at home and our students are now far away from that and feel like they are helpless and can't help their families. Um, I know that sometimes students may experience some of these um, issues and may not know that it's time to seek treatment yet. What would you say is something they can go, well, I'm, I've reached that point where I really need to yeah. seek out some help. So some good indicators would be some changes in behavior. So if you notice yourself either sleeping more excessively or sleep, sleeping significantly less and having trouble staying asleep, waking up frequently, changes in your eating patterns too, um, and knowing what your cues are. So when you're feeling stressed, you may eat more or you may eat significantly less. Also socially withdrawing, so no longer hanging out with your friends or your roommates, wanting to spend more time on your own. Those are some of the big cues that maybe it might be a good time to reach out for some services and talk to someone one-on-one. -on -one. What CAP services are included in your student health fees? So the CAP services that are included in the student health fees is um, we offer group counseling and that is free. Our initial assessments and emergency appointments are free, and any counseling services in the residence halls are free, but ongoing counseling services at CAPS are $20 a session. And, yeah. and so, like I said, after students have exhausted their uh, two uh, initial consultations with a clinician per semester, uh, if they choose, they want to go on to ongoing counseling. Again, as Megan mentioned, it was there's a $20 copay, which is actually significantly less than what you would find with insurance. Totally um, nice. And the nice thing is that all of our clinicians who are licensed and you know board certified, they all actually have are in tune with the student, and so they really understand, you know. What you're going through they've been through this they they really are you know the whole point is that they want to help you guys succeed and you know as i mentioned again you know our whole you know mission as the pat walker health center uh from all departments is really to keep you know our students healthy and on the road to graduation so so get you graduated yeah exactly no no and so so right now you guys are getting a first the first ever look of inside the new caps facility um in here this is our new waiting area a lot more space uh, when we were going through the designs of the new facilities uh, and the renovation process, we really wanted to have focus on an open, inclusive, bright, you know, cheery environment. You know, I mean, you walk through this building and all of the natural light coming in, it just really, it's, I mean, I love it. It's, you know, so much 
way better than fluorescent lighting, that's for sure. <laughs> so yeah, so as you guys can see here, so we've you know expanded the CAPS facility. We've doubled their size. We have added a larger waiting area. We have various group conference rooms and group workshop areas, you know, dedicated space for each of the services that we offer. And then again, we added more office space so that we can have more clinicians and we can start to, you know, really focus on, you know, seeing as many students as we possibly can. Privacy glass. And yes. Yeah, the privacy yeah. glass is really, and, and I mean, I love the new look of it too. I, I didn't even realize they were putting this up there until uh, the other day when they tore down all the plastic sheets. But, uh, you know, it's pretty awesome in how seamless all this is going to look between, you know, the renovations of the old building with the construction of the new building. And so, you know, everything's just going to flow. And, you know, on this campus, we're really fortunate to have a health and wellness facility that actually includes both medical counseling and wellness. Um, a lot of universities around the country, they actually have those three departments separated and on three various different places on campus. For us at the University of Arkansas, we are so fortunate to have all that under one umbrella and one building. And so, you know, things are really just, the idea is that we want to make things convenient for you guys when it comes to health and wellness, so. Mm -hmm. Can you show some of the rooms? Yeah, we can definitely show some of the group uh, uh, workshop rooms. So, as you guys can see, we're still putting in some of the furniture and we're still getting the painting done. But here, like, so for instance, this would be one of our group, you know, therapy, you know, rooms. So, you know, this would be, I don't know, what's one of the groups that we would, you know. So we have, for instance, an LGBTQ connect group. And so this would be a space where that would take place. We also offer an anxiety workshop. This would be a space that that group uses as well. Um, we also have a, a trauma group that does group work and then yoga, and so this is a space that could serve for both of those purposes, group and yoga. Awesome. And speaking of yoga, we're actually gonna walk on over and we're gonna check out the wellness center, or the wellness facility, or aspect mm -hmm. of the health center. We have Lena from Phoenix. She says her daughter will be here in the fall. Mm -hmm. She says hi. Hello, <laughs> well, we're excited Lena. to have them here. Lena. Hello, Lena. All right, let's move on out construction guys so let's let them finish up because again we are moving in here on friday and we are very excited thank you yeah, thanks for yeah. joining us bye have a good day so yeah so um and just to let you guys know uh to make an appointment with caps specifically and not necessarily with the residence halls uh you would need to call the caps line um and that number is on our website um and you would need to schedule an appointment with them uh, the, uh, there is no online scheduling for CAPS just yet. Um, it's not necessarily something we were looking at, but I know we've had had some requests about that, and so we are going to eventually figure out how we can look at that. But for the meantime, to schedule an appointment with CAPS, uh, just call the number um, on our main, either the main line or the specific CAPS number, and then they'll be able to always get you set up. As we move into the wellness center, can you talk about some of the classes that people can take? At the wellness center? Yeah, so first we need to kind of just talk a little about, about wellness and health promotion. So the third component of the health center is wellness and health promotion. And what they focus on is building necessarily um, through education and promotion initiatives, healthy lifestyle behaviors. So they offer various things like wellness coaching with a certified wellness educator or a wellness coach. Um, you know, things like uh, what I tell students, and this is included in the student health beat too. So wellness coaching is essentially free of charge. Um, and so what that looks like is, you know, sitting with a health educator, looking at your life and saying, I want to focus on, like for me, I sit down with them and I focus on sleep. Um, I really wanted them to kind of really help me better, you know, get that full suggested eight hours of sleep. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't there earlier. Did you so. take a class here as well? Is that I did. Under this wellness umbrella? I yeah. And so, in like addition to the class, to the wellness coaching, we also offer uh, the wellness uh, academic series, and this is four credit um, like classes. So things like environmental health, um, we offer things like uh, mindfulness, um, meditation, resilience, and thriving. All of these different lifestyle building classes, you know, academic health classes, you know, and. So that's the academic side of things. Now there's an outreach component as well of, oh, it looks like they just finished yoga, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Earlier we were, they, they, they were, they were here, they had yoga class going on. So we offer two, we also offer free classes as well. So we offer two free yoga classes so far. Uh, we have Mindful Flow and Yoga Well on Mondays at 5.30 and Fridays at 11. And these will be offered in this activity space right here. 
Um, and so in addition to that, we have things like uh, meditation, um, and then not only do we offer these classes, but we also have other programs within the wellness and health promotion department. So for instance, um, our substance abuse prevention program, SEER, um, they are housed within this department, and so they focus on you know, educating students on you know, risk reduction strategies when it comes to alcohol, um, focusing on things like bystander intervention, looking at you know, various you know, aspects of that college culture and really trying to make students you know understand that there are ways that they can do things healthily and also just you know reduce the risk that comes with it the course that you took courtney i'm wondering what was uh what was that particular class so it was a public health course um, i'm a nursing major like i told you guys earlier but it was actually called healthy relationships ah. and highly recommended i absolutely loved it seriously it was like my favorite class that I've taken so far on campus. Um, it was a one hour course, so if any of you need a one hour class, it's yeah, perfect. they're great for fillers. Yes, it was amazing. And it was honestly really great information that I'll remember forever. So I'm taking more public health classes um, this upcoming semester because I loved it so much. If, uh, what's the secret to a healthy relationship? You know what? It's what like, was the takeaway? It was multiple uh -huh. relationships. So it was like work relationships, your family relationships, um, romantic relationships, all sorts of stuff. Um, what was really cool to me about the class is that we would have different people come in, um, like counselors or people with different experiences would come in every day and they would, you know, give us their stories or just tell us different examples of stuff and it was just really awesome to hear like other perspectives. I don't know, you, yeah. you start to consider a lot of things you hadn't considered before and it was just a really eye-opening course that I really enjoyed. Well, and the nice thing too about the wellness, you know, academic series is that we offer such a diverse like you know range of classes so like my favorite class oh so go, go Joan you're fine <laughs> you're fine you guys are good so like my favorite class for instance is the environmental health class um, this is a class that focuses on you know understanding how the environment and nature necessarily impacts you both from a physical wellness and an emotional wellness standpoint but also you know it's one of those classes where you know we get to take our students out on nature hikes for the hour you know yeah. we get to learn you know do volunteer activities when it comes to like you know you know picking up you know debris and it's it's one of those classes that I think is really important to me at least you know being an outdoorsman so um, but again so many different classes that we offer um, but here, let's go take a look and see if anyone's in here mm -hmm. we did have a question yeah. um, so students seeking medical treatment all they need to bring is their insurance card is that correct yes they needed to bring their insurance card obviously their student ID would be great as well yes. um, we can obviously look it up but yeah they would just need to bring a copy of their insurance card and then just to double check that we are also a network provider we get a lot of students that don't necessarily realize that they may not be a network um, and that could definitely change some costs. Um, and so we wanna make sure that if, before you do come here, double check that the Pat Walker Health Center and the University of Arkansas is in network for your healthcare coverage. If it isn't, give us a call. We can kind of work through you with your options. We have a student health insurance plan that's really great. It you know, comes with a $300 deductible, which I tell a lot of folks, you know, that's basically essentially if you were to fall on the curb and break your ankle, that's your deductible for the year. Yeah. So. <laughs> So let's see, all right, so inside here is the wellness section. So this includes an activity space. This is a nice little floor where they were doing yoga earlier. They do things like meditation. Uh, this is also where a lot of our student uh, wellness interns and our you know, wellness staff will work as well. So let's see here. Dr. Mink, you here? Maybe not. <laughs> I thought he was gonna be here. But yeah, so we have you know conference rooms, student work area spaces. Uh, and again, one of the things I didn't probably mention earlier was that we really, when designing the furniture and the inside layout, we really wanted to make sure that we were giving students a, a, a nice space where they can come and just, you know, take their minds off things, to study a little bit. It's really quiet in here, honestly. And so, um, you know, we really want to make sure that students have a place where they can come and work. And so I'll show you guys that on the way out. But so again, this is a little workspace for our students, um, our student workers. Um, really, you know, they have, in my opinion, they have the best view in all of the building. But uh, well, maybe not right now. But as soon as they're done with our parking lot, they will. And you hire students, is that right? We do. Uh, uh, we do have. Uh, so in the fall, once you guys get here, I would just say double check the newswire and also look at um, uh, the student the student work study job postings. We do at, uh, from time to time uh, are looking for wellness and health promotion students. Um, as far as medical students. Um, it's kind of hit or miss whether or not we have positions open, but if you are have a medical background or you're interested in getting the medical field, you know, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're, we are obviously happy to talk with you and figure out how we can help you kind of, you know, 
achieve your dreams. So, uh, and if you guys in our email, um, it's pwhc at uark.edu. And then the main phone number is 575-4451. Sorry, 479-575-4451. I'm so used to just, you know. Sure. <laughs> and we'll post those below. Yeah, so Perfect, great. Right here you can see the Agriculture, Food, and Life Science building. So if you're a bumper student, that's a main place for you. So you're real close by. You can see quads, the poultry science building, and then behind this building you can't see it. But there's a stadium. So, you know, you're real central on campus. It's really great access. So if you're on in class and you go get a checkup, you can pop right over here and get right back to class afterwards. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I do a shameless plug about pedestrian shameless safety? <laughs> we insist. So, all right, so as you guys can see here, we're doing some work on our parking lot. Now, um, for those students living over, you know, in Maple and over on the Northwest Quad area, we understand a lot of students like to park and walk through our parking lot. Um, I'm we just really want to make sure to let you guys know, um, please, please, please don't walk through the parking lot. Use the sidewalks, they're there for a reason. We are building a more efficient way to walk through this. Uh, you can either, as you can see where those trees are, they're gonna have a walkway that leads into our building or there's a walkway that's gonna go all the way down to Maple. But we really wanna, we can't stress enough, you know, don't walk in the middle of the parking lot, especially, you know, during the nighttime because it's tough to see sometimes. Um, and, you know, just general pedestrian safety, you know, is really kind of something important you know right. look where you're going um, especially with you know we I got a lot of students that are walking through in the middle of the parking lot on their phones looking down and it's a lot of those, like situations where you're like oh please look up so you can see me please look up don't run into my car yeah. it's happened before I'm not kidding <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right yeah, what are we seeing next let's uh, let's go downstairs and let's show you guys the last component of the wellness uh, uh, health health growth department and that is the classroom this is where you'll be spending a lot of time if you are taking those classes this is where you'll be um, so one of the major things we really wanted to focus on was adding um, classroom space student space you know we really made sure that this oh hey look and Katie's doing yoga oh, hi. oh hey <laughs> this is Katie Street she is one of our wellness GAs she hi. teaches the yoga class you want to talk a little bit about your mindful meditation class on, on Monday night? she's also yeah. a spiritual gangster so I teach a therapeutic yoga class that's here on Mondays at 5.30, so it's very safe, very beginner friendly, very like de-stressing versus working out, although I do like the more intense yoga, that's not what I teach here. And Dr. Mink also teaches a class on Fridays at 11, in that sense, so. So yeah, so, so Katie will be one of our, and GAs this year and so she'll you know if you guys want you know come on in check out her yoga class she's an awesome teacher um, yeah we also teach a yoga class that you can get for credit so we teach all these one-hour classes these yeah like two one PBHL 2101 because they're listed under public health so we teach like resilience and thriving wellness you like yeah, women's health all that. kinds of different stuff okay sorry but repetition but we also have a yoga one and yoga two so you can take yoga for an actual credit Fantastic. Awesome. And yeah. I want to just stress again, uh, our yoga classes are made for also for you know people of all experience levels. Uh, you know we don't want to you know don't feel discouraged to come and take a yoga class because you've never taken yoga before. You know all of our instructors are you know are trained to be able to work with you know all levels of experience. So don't let that deter you, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cool. I'm going to show them the classrooms. Level class. Yes. I'm going to show them the classrooms. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So yeah. So something that we haven't really talked about yet um, for the, you know, like if you're sick and you need a prescription, where can you get that? Ah, yes. So uh, we partner with Walmart on campus, or I believe as they call it, Small Mart. Mm -hmm. uh, we partner with them for pharmacy prescriptions. So the way that works is if you are using one of the medical clinics and you would like to, you know, you have a prescription, we will send that over to Walmart. And then Walmart can fill them, and then they also offer on-campus delivery for the residence halls, uh, which is pretty awesome. Straight to your room, right? Straight, straight to, to your room. To your door. To your, to, your, to your hall. To your hall, yeah, not necessarily yeah, to the so room, it's the mailbox. So that's located in the Garland Center, so where the big Garland parking garage is, the bookstore, it's at the end. Small Mart, it's real convenient. If you guys don't use it, you're fools. So <laughs> use it, it's really convenient, it's real nice. And the same thing too, is if you're already, you know, if you have ongoing prescriptions, um, you know, and you wanna have them transferred over to the Walmart on campus, you know, we recommend doing that because again, the, the added convenience of being, a, you know, right on campus and the added convenience of, you know, being delivered to your residence halls is 
really something you can't beat. Mm -hmm. um, as far as other pharmacies go, if you aren't necessarily a Walmart farm, you know, working in, with Walmart Pharmacy, there is CVS. Uh, CVS is off campus, but uh, there is a CVS in town, as well Walgreens. as a Walgreens. Um, all the typical. I think all, those are our yeah, I was gonna say, main ones. The main ones that we see students use, like, the most, utilizing both are the Walmart on campus and the Walmart on Wellington, as well as uh, CVS. So, mm -hmm. All right, so right here, now we're here back on the bottom floor. Um, this is our three wellness classrooms. So uh, each multi-purpose room is designed to house anywhere from 20 students in each one, or up, we can combine them all together to 200 people. So uh, these classrooms really are just kind of the bread and butter of this section of the building. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can definitely go in. Oh, that. So we have. Right now they're doing a CPR. So right now our our own staff is doing a CPR class. Like, so you can see here we offer various activities, things like CPR. So there, are, you know, from time to time we'll offer CPR certification, first aid certification, um, all with trained instructors. And so right now you can see our class, our students, not our students, these are our yeah, actual staff. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, we're gonna go out this door and we can show you what the classroom looks like. So yeah, so each classroom is separated by a cool barrier system that is for the most part soundproof, but it uh, you know allows us to offer more classes simultaneously. Whereas before we only had one classroom, and it wasn't very big, and so now we have the opportunity to show. So again, so as you can see through here, these are our classrooms. Um, just a pretty awesome, great space, natural light. Um, if you're taking an afternoon class, though. Um, we will pull the shades down because it does get a little bright in there. But for the most part, yeah, um, our classrooms combine to one large thing. So uh, one of the things I just found out yesterday actually is that the community center, uh, the community blood center of the Ozarks, uh, who is one of our major partners for blood drives on campus, uh, they were actually going to decide they would like to host all their blood drives in our classrooms because of how you know convenient the space is. And so um, you know throughout the year we'll offer things like blood drives. Um, various other you know you know educational activities um, or movies um, for instance like caps does a lot of focus on suicide prevention um, and you know really kind of understanding some of the you know common things that students are you know have concerns of and so like we'll host you know speakers and you know and movies that we have get we've been given the rights to show and so these will all take place here in these classrooms so we did have another question. Yeah. Heather asked, is there a possibility of Pat Walker Health Center filing secondary insurance in the near future? Because she said that, um, I think she asked about it, and as of right now, they said that it wasn't an option. A secondary insurance. Uh, that would say, you know, that's a pretty specific question. I would say you want to call the health centers, uh, the intake folk, and actually ask them specifically. They are the ones who deal with all of the medical billing. Um, and so they would be able to answer that question probably better than I can. So I don't want to necessarily give you an answer that isn't necessarily right. So right. Um, and we appreciate all the questions that are coming in. Yeah, no, we really, I love them. Again, you know, we, we, we do get a lot of questions throughout the year. Um, you know, just different things that, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, how to check my account on the, you know, the patient portal. I don't know how to make an appointment. So, you know, I think the one thing I want to really stress is that we understand that this is a, you know, a very exciting time in your guys' lives coming onto campus. You know, you guys are obviously, you know, just fresh out of high school, and so a lot of this is new. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, everybody here at the health center is, we're, you know, we really want to help you guys succeed. And so, you know, don't feel as though that, you know, don't wait, you know, to wait till something gets worse to ask for help. You know, we're here, we will, you know, do whatever we can to make sure that you guys are comfortable, that you guys have the medical and mental health care that you guys need. Um, and so, again, anything specific, again, give us a call. We're happy to work with each individual student. And so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, along with that also, your housing staff is also available to mm -hmm. help. They can have great tools for resources and referrals to CAPS mm -hmm. and health services here. So, you know, get to know your RAs. If you have a question, they if they if you have a problem, they probably have experienced it themselves and they can probably help you or direct you to a place that can help you. So um, get involved, you know, meet people, ask for help. You can I mean, probably you can find say that too about all of student affairs, really. Yeah, I mean, every, really all of the us. division of student affairs, I mean, we're, our whole goal is really to help students succeed. And so, you know, we just don't, don't feel overwhelmed. We understand that there is a lot of overwhelming 
times throughout college, but you know, there are resources, programs, and services in place to help you guys succeed. So just remember that. What a fantastic tour of the new building. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad to you know, see I'm, it all. I was gonna say, this will be the first major group to really see it. You know, we haven't, you know, we opened this up, uh, oh, I guess it was, uh, well, about four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so we haven't really gotten a chance to really show, you know, really publicly show this. And so I'm really happy that we were able to kind of show you guys mm -hmm. this. So. Thanks, Zach. So thanks for joining us today. Um, be sure to tune in tomorrow at 10 o'clock for a house, no, Friday at 10 o'clock for our housing services tour. Um, so we can talk about all the other things that housing encompasses and that can help you with. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us today. Hope you guys that your questions were answered. If not, be sure to comment down below. We'll try to get those answers or direct you back to the Pat Walker Health Center for those answers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you guys have a great day and we'll see you guys later.